Let me cut across to Shilpa Nair joining us live for more on that. Shilpa, he's going to be produced before court any time now. We believe uh, 12 p.m. was the set time where his anticipatory bail will be taken up. Do we know about his whereabouts? Is he still at Bowering Hospital getting his medical test? When is he going to be arrive in court? Uh, and, and what's going to be proceeding in court today? Uh, well, uh, Nabila, what we've been given to understand is that uh, Prajwal Ravana is still at the uh, CID headquarters where the SIT uh, team has kept him there, of course, and he'll be taken to the Bowering Hospital for a medical che checkup in just a short while from now. And uh, then, of course, being produced uh, before a judicial magistrate, uh, that needs to be done uh, 24 hours uh, off within his arrest. Uh, so all of that uh, procedures will be followed, uh, you know, uh, as per protocol uh, by the SIT officials. And meanwhile, like you rightly pointed out, his anticipated bail plea is also coming up for hearing in the court, uh, but most likely the uh, anticipatory bail plea uh, could be uh, dismissed as infructuous now that uh, he's been officially taken into custody by the SIT. Uh, the SIT, of course, had a warrant as well. Uh, so now, of course, Prajwal, uh, Prajwal's legal team will have to probably apply for a, a normal bail, a regular bail, and that, be, that remains to be seen what exactly happens in the court. We'll have to, of course, wait and watch. Uh, but even as we speak, hectic discussions are underway. We are right outside the Chief Minister's residence here in Bengaluru. And just a short while back, Home Minister G. Parmeshra uh, went inside the Chief Minister's residence uh, probably to, uh, you know, apprise him about the situation, uh, the, the arrest of Prajwal Revana and what kind of legal processes will follow from here on. Uh, but we saw some you know, after over 30 days, after over a month, Prajwal Ravana, of course, returned from Germany uh, to Karnataka last night, late in the night yesterday, of course. Uh, and the minute he landed, uh, once he cleared that immigration checkpoint, the immigration officials handed him over to the SIT, uh, the Karnataka police officials, who then, of course, took him to the CID headquarters. And remember, he was accompanied by uh, an all-women team. Uh, 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 the, the officials who were accompanying him were all women. And this, uh, we have been told, was a right. symbolic message that the uh, SIT wanted to give out uh, to you the know, victims. And, and it's very interesting that considering that there are that really many victims who still they feel that they are threatened, they don't have the kind of protection that they, they needs to be given to them. And despite assurances by the SIT, a lot of them are a little apprehensive to come forward and file complaints. Though there's counselling session being uh, on, there are several of the people who have featured in those videos who the SIT is in touch with to try and counsel them into filing a complaint if they have felt violated. Now, while the investigation deepens into this, I'm going to cut across to our legal expert, Sanket M. Yanagi, the Supreme Court advocate, joining us to give us more on the legal options that Prajwal Ravana has at this point. Uh, Sanket, over to you on the legal options that Prajwal can explore. These are heinous crimes. He has rape cases against him. He is powerful, but uh, at the same time, as a citizen of this country, he is entitled to some legal options. If you could list that out for us. So first of all, he was no way available from any other uh, reachable with Nexus, and not even through the video recording. And secondly, he records the video only in the recent past and sends it fixing a date as to when he would be coming to India. And to show that he is co cooperating for the purpose of investigation, to have the bail granted in his favor, he might have recorded it. That's how it prima facie appears to be. But now the conduct of the party to escape from the clutches of law and without intimating the SIT or the investigating agencies, even after service of several summonses, not appearing even before the media or recording or not responding to it in any other mode. Now it's a technological world. He can even communicate through email. He, he can communicate through several other modes of communications, but mm. he has not chosen to do so. So it appears to be that he wanted to escape or he wanted to evade the arrest. He wanted to see that somehow uh, the uh, investigation is prolonged so that the investigation could be derailed also. So these are the circumstances which may weigh heavily while rejection of the bail against him. Okay, so you're saying that whatever legal options that he has at this point, the fact that he went evading, absconding, took his own sweet time to respond, uh, itself will weigh heavy on his chances to get bail. Anticipatory bail that he's filed, and while that happens, 
We know that there's politics also that's brewing around this. Of course, the Congress gunning for the BJP as the JDS is now an alliance partner of the BJP. They're an NDA unit in Karnataka. So the politics playing around it, the pressures and the perils it comes with it. Give us more on that, uh, Mr. Yenagi. Also, what do you think about the anticipatory bail? What would be, in your view, the outcome? First of all, when the first information was available with the police and uh, it is being circulated among the public even before the election would take place, the question that is still to be answered by the police, Karnataka police, is as to when first information is available, why not the FIR has been registered? That's the first question. Why it was registered subsequently? Why it has allowed him or facilitated him to escape from Bangalore? Why? a close visit has not uh, been done by the state police. And the central agency also contributed much in its negligence in allowing him from traveling from one country to another country, especially under these serious allegations. So these are the blame game is always there in the political arena. Whether it's a Congress, which is the ruling party in Karnataka, which has allowed him to travel to Bangalore and to board a uh, flight. And it's the central government again, which is the BJP government, which is in power, which has uh, the control of the MEA in as much as the immigration department and all the airports are in the control of the central government. So uh, it is not a case wherein the central government should not have uh, not to interfere here. And it could have interfered. It has got a, as every information about the developments which are taking place in the state. So, But uh, still, uh, it is a blame game. Both are, in, in my opinion, responsible equally. All right. Well, thanks very much for that opinion there. Sanket Yanagi giving us uh, the angles in which the legal experts will be looking into this case. While that said, I did mention politics playing out. BJP has now reacted to Prajwal Revana's arrest, says the SIT probe will be ensuring that the truth will, will be exposed. In fact, he says that he has faith in a way of in the SIT of thoroughly probing into the videos that have now surfaced.